But how was this part of Chicago named The Loop? There were actually two Fort Dearborns, though. Little known secret. Now everybody knows that. And another theater, Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> That's good? Got it? Yeah. Sweet. What's really good, YouTube? It's Louis Gusto. Welcome back to Chicago. Today, we're in the heart of the Windy City, a piece of land hemmed in on three sides by water and home to some of the most majestic skyscrapers on the planet. In this film, we're gonna show you around our hometown, stop for some great food and drink, plus tell you the story of how Chicago became Chicago. But before we get into anything, please do us this one favor and finesse that like button. Let's get this film to 2,000 likes so we can make a sequel, The Loop 2, Electric Boogaloo. And now, if you're ready, let's explore The Loop. We are starting off our morning in the loop with a stop to Goddess and the Baker. They were founded in 2015 as a spinoff of Goddess and the Grocer. They have a few locations around Chicago and one in Wisconsin, but this is their riverfront location on LaSalle and Wacker. Larissa ordered a chai latte. I got a nitro cold brew, avocado toast with everything. This is just like peak millennial and a cinnamon roll because you can't leave Goddess and the Baker without getting some kind of baked good. So I'm about to try this avocado toast. We got some arugula on there, some spices, nice piece of toast. Let's go. Avocado Toast. Cinnamon roll. Mm. This is one of my favorite coffees. The Loop is central Chicago and defines the three sides of the city, north, west, and south. One would think that it would be community area number one, but it's actually community area number 32. Don't ask me why. It would have been better as Community Area 34. Together with Streeterville, River North, and part of the South Loop, The Loop defines downtown Chicago. But technically speaking, there is no part of Chicago officially named downtown. You won't find it in the list of community areas, nor will you find it in the list of 200 plus neighborhoods. But never fear, because we all know what you mean when you say downtown Chicago. The Art Institute is Chicago's most famous museum and the subject of one of our very first films on this channel. The organization itself had been around for about a decade before moving into this building constructed for the 1893 World's Fair. Personally speaking, it is my favorite museum in the entire world and home to so many gems, including an Egyptian collection, beautiful Renaissance paintings, and a recreation of the old Chicago Stock Exchange. The Art Institute is what you consider a must-see in Chicago, one of the things that you must do whether it's your first visit or 1,000 visit. The official borders of the Loop are the Chicago River on the north and west, Lake Michigan on the east, and Roosevelt on the south. The community area contains smaller neighborhoods, Lakeshore East, Printers Row, the Financial District, and a portion of the South Loop. Nearby neighborhoods include the West Loop, which we did an entire film on, and that film is seriously underrated. Go check it out in the link below. Park began its life as a rocky strip of land separating Michigan Avenue from Lake Michigan. The key is that city planners designated this as public ground so it could be forever free of buildings. Over the decades, it grew thanks to landfill and today it's one of the city's best parks. Grant Park has an incredibly fascinating story and one that's way too long to tell in this film. But let us know in the comments if you want us to put together an entire film about Grant Park, its history, and the best things to see and do here. Of any neighborhood in Chicago, the Loop is the easiest to get to because literally all roads lead here. Every single CTA train line, with the exception of Yellow, will get you to the Loop. There are over 20 bus routes, including 3, 4, 29, 22, 36, 134, 156, and those expressways that destroyed neighborhoods, closed local businesses, and left grotesque, ugly scars on our cityscape. Yeah, those will get you here too. The very first people to recognize Chicago's important location on the river and lake included the Ojibwa, Odawa, Menominee, Ho-Chunk, and Potawatomi, among several other Native American tribes. We featured Chicago's as well as NYC's Chinatown several times on this channel. Well, here at Clark and Van Buren, you can see a glimpse of the Shai's original Chinatown, which once occupied a few blocks down here. Part of it was demolished to build the federal prison, and these buildings behind me are the only remaining structures that harken back to the days when there were Chinese laundry, restaurants all around this area. The pagoda sign is a dead-on clue that this was once a Chinatown, but that's now a Mexican restaurant. Fort Dearborn was the first major Euro-American structure to be completed in Chicago. You can see the historical markers of where it once stood here at the intersection of Michigan and Wacker. There were actually two Fort Dearborns. The first one burned down in a fire, and the second one 
also burned down in a fire. But what about the Chicago grid? It's time for lunch here at Poke Poke. This is my favorite spot in Chicago for poke. They also serve ramen here, ironically enough. And they're located in the Palmer House Hotel. Right on the Wabash side is where you'll find the entrance. The L tracks are right outside, but the glass is so soundproof, we don't hear a thing. Today we got a build your own bowl with salmon, tuna, all sorts of toppings like onion, radish, jalapeno, scallion, seaweed. Also got a golden oolong tea to wash everything down. They sell all sorts of drinks, different Asian snacks. Some of the best tasting poke you will ever have. It's a nice piece of tuna here. I always have trouble mixing my poke bowl because the ingredients start falling out if I mix it too much. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. Nice and beautiful for the camera. Say cheese. The Chicago grid dates back to the original town plat of 1830. And yes, even back then they planned for alleyways, which to this day remains one of the greatest achievements in urban planning history. The Chicago Architecture Center was founded in 1966 as the Chicago Architecture Foundation. They came together to save the Glessner House from demolition because this was a time when historic buildings were getting crushed left, right, and center. In 2018, they moved into this riverfront location and they have nearly 10,000 square feet of exhibition space. And you know your boy loves architecture. I've never been here. Well, let's go inside. In 1837, just four years after becoming a town, the city of Chicago was incorporated. In the city's early days, South Water Street, today known as Wacker, became a hub of commercial activity. And just a block south on Lake Street, well, that was the city's first retail district, a place where you could secure the bag. But Potter Palmer led the charge to make State Street, once an important Indian trail, into the city's premier shopping thoroughfare. And that's what it is today, the best place to go shopping for yours truly. By the way, I wear size 14 shoes. Carson Peary Scott & Company was founded in 1854 by Samuel Carson and John Peary. For over a century, it was one of Chicago's leading department stores. Schlesinger & Meyer was formed in 1872, and 17 years later, commissioned Hall of Fame architect Louis Sullivan to redesign their Loop headquarters. The end result was, as the old saying goes, a double-edged sword. The renovation yielded one of the most beautiful buildings in Chicago history, but by the time it was done, Schlesinger & Meyer went under. So rival Carson Peary Scott moved in, Louis Sullivan's cast iron is the very definition of beauty. He was an underappreciated genius then as well as now. Today it's home to Target, but if you dare call it the Gothic Target, go ahead and take the clown wig off right now. As we all know, the Great Chicago Fire of 1871 destroyed this entire area and then some, but the city quickly rebuilt itself better and stronger than ever. Kind of like Robocop. But how was this part of Chicago named The Loop? Color Factory has finally come to Chicago. It is located in the Sears Tower right next to the Sky Deck box office. This is not just a selfie museum, it's an entire interactive experience with multiple rooms that are gonna engage all of your senses. After registering at the Color Factory, you come into a mirror maze known as Perspective Party. As you can see here, it's a maze of mirrors and geometric shapes, all sorts of colors. This room is designed by artist Camille Walala. We are in the Bright Noise Room designed by artist Yuri Suzuki. There are multicolored horns in this room. Each color is paired with a different type of sound, and as you walk through, the different horns start playing the songs, which make a different type of symphony, depending on where you're standing. Great way to experience the sensation of color and noise. Flavor Rama is a theater for your mouth. You basically get this nice popcorn plastic bin with some pop rocks in here and a viewfinder. You taste pop rocks, look through the viewfinder, and write down what flavor you think it is. These are so cool. This room is called Immersed in Verses. The colors are inspired by poetry from local students. You're just supposed to lose yourself in the poetry. The Windy City Confetti Accumulation has probably been one of my favorite rooms so far. The Chicago flag is on the wall. There's the Chicago star ottoman. You look up at the camera, they throw confetti, and you get some really memorable photos. In the Color Scopes room by artist Michelle Bernhardt, there is a full calendar, and you find your birthday to see what color is associated with that date and what it says about you. So let's find mine, it's November 6th. Come over here to November. Guess you have to come to the room to find out what it says. All right, I know this is the color factory, but this is definitely one of the most colorful rooms so far. It reminds me of those jail scenes in movies where the prisoner talks to the visitor through the glass. You sit down here and listen to some audio that's gonna instruct you to choose some colors for the person sitting across from you. And then finally, you get to choose one of these business cards to give them a compliment. 
Now this probably is the most fun room of all in Color Factory and the color green is inspired by the CTA Green Line and the Chicago River around St. Patrick's Day. We spent over two hours, $38 for adults and $28 for the kids. You also get a QR code and multiple snacks served to you. The QR code you scan at the various photo stations and get a private photo gallery emailed to you after. There's also a wonderful gift shop at the end. This is definitely one of the best new experiences in Chicago for 2022. Greetings from London. I hope you're enjoying this film. We really appreciate when you hit that little red subscribe button. It helps our community to grow. We're bringing Latino and Asian voices to travel filmmaking, and we really appreciate you joining up to Gusto Nation. So how did this original part of Chicago come to be known as the Loop? Well, you may be tempted to point to the elevated train tracks that complete a loop down here, and I think most people would agree with you, but there are some historians that say that strands powering cable cars once made a loop and gave the area its name. In any case, these beautiful historic elevated train tracks were completed in the late 1890s. In addition to the elevated tracks, the Loop has two subways running through it, one along State Street and one along Dearborn. This metro entrance may look familiar to you if you've ever been to Paris. In fact, it was a gift from the city of Paris and installed here in 2003. It's made from the original molds of the metro entrances that you can find all over our sister city. White flight and urban decay is part of practically every American city story. And unfortunately, the Chicago Loop is no exception. Businesses moved to the suburbs, historic buildings were demolished to build parking garages, and even our beloved Grant Park fell into disrepair. One of Helmut Jan's most controversial designs, the Thompson Center, was once home to Illinois state government. And for a while there, we thought it might be demolished, but thankfully, Google recently purchased it, so we're all waiting with bated breath to see what it'll look like in just a few years. Maybe YouTube will even set me up a studio in there. Broadway in Chicago was formed in the year 2000. It breathed new life into the Windy City's theater district. It currently operates out of five theaters, the CIBC, Nederlander, Cadillac Palace, and Auditorium Theaters, as well as the Broadway Playhouse. We are at London House, which is the number one rooftop bar in all of Chicago, in my humble opinion. You have amazing views of the Chicago River. You can see all these tour boats going by. We're rocking with the tropical rum drinks today. We got a bunch of American tapas. As a native Chicagoan, I love being up here with these views, enjoying good times with family, food, and of course, a little bit of drinking. You know how we do. The street names in the Chicago Loop are legendary. Wacker, Randolph, Lake, Madison, Washington, Monroe, State, Jackson, Van Buren, Wabash, Franklin, Michigan, Dearborn, Clark, LaSalle. Did I miss any? Plus our alleys are so famous that they have names like Calhoun, Arcade, and Benton. What's the dilly yo? We hope you're enjoying this film and we wanted to thank you for watching our channel. We would really appreciate if you joined our Patreon community. It is the best way to support our mission, bringing a unique voice and experience to travel filmmaking. Buckingham Fountain was first announced in the Tribune in 1925, and two years later it was powered on for the first time in front of more than 50,000 Chicagoans. It is without a doubt one of the jewels in Chicago's Infinity Gauntlet and impossible to look at without thinking about both love and marriage. Every year, trillions of people visit Millennium Park, but I wonder how many realize that it's built on top of an old rail yard. Millennium Park opened up in 2004, and the Cloud Gate, of course, is its most popular attraction. But other things to see and do here include the Pritzker Bandshell, Pedestrian Bridge, Lurie Garden, Crown Fountain, Wrigley Square Colonnade, and every holiday season, the official City of Chicago Christmas tree. Moving forward, I hope that the world realizes that the Loop is one of the greatest urban neighborhoods on the planet. It's centrally located, the infrastructure to get to and from here is outstanding, and the collection of skyscrapers is an incomparable treasure. Furthermore, the Loop's position on both the Chicago River and Lake Michigan is just as important, if not more so, than it was 200 years ago. Peace and blessings. Uh -huh.